And now, let's do Wellness Extra here on Breakfast Extra. Today, we're taking a look at something very interesting. As I welcome you to Wellness Central, we're celebrating World Breast Feeding Week, a week set aside uh, to celebrate the very beautiful and interesting phenomenon that is breastfeeding, the benefits for children as well as mothers as well. A global uh, campaign to raise awareness and also promote the benefits of breastfeeding amongst mothers and babies. Now, breastfeeding is a natural and essential part of early child development, providing the perfect nutrition for infants and contributing to their healthy growth. Mm. Now, this week, from August 1st to the 7th, uh, we joined millions around the world to highlight and highlighting the importance of breastfeeding, supporting mothers, mothers and advocating for policies that create a breastfeeding friendly environment. And so to help us understand more about the significance of this week, the benefits of breastfeeding and the challenges mothers face. Joining us today in the studio, live in the studio, is Rashida Sani Afolabi. She's midwife and public health at practitioner. She joins us live uh, in the studio. Welcome to the program. Welcome. Good, Good to morning. have you here. I just want to ask, you've birthed <laughs> children, yes? Sure. Thank you very much. Know, so sure. have I. It's you a beautiful tell thing. Me, tell me thank you. Mr. <laughs> thank you. Have you? Yes, now. Oh, really? Yeah, my, uh, my second cousin, Haruna, I shouldn't say that, he's going to kill me. Uh, it is, but it's not about you, Jim. Yeah, no, it is about me. I birthed him. I pulled him out into this world. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Rashida, for making me here today. Well, thank first you, off, Daniel. let's start by asking the quintessential question, what, how important it is for mothers to engage in breastfeeding after having babies. Thank you, Masaya. Usually, breastfeeding is something that we cannot overemphasize its importance. Mm. The first thing is, that acts of bonding, you cannot quantify the love, the affection that comes with breastfeeding. But I'll take us through when the woman is pregnant. From pregnancy, she's already carrying the baby. She's aspiring to have a live baby. And in the process, she, she will be informed of why she needs to breastfeed her baby. We know that breast milk is the first nutrition any child is expected to have. In fact, it is a fundamental right when it comes to nutrition because nutrition is essential for children. So it's the, best, it's the right of the child to have to adequate nutrition. And in doing that, a pregnant woman ought to have been informed ahead that uh, this is the best way to go and this is how to go about it. So right from the labor room, immediately the baby is out. The midwife delivers the baby towards the mother's abdomen. And thereafter, the woman is stable. She puts the baby right to the breast in the labor room, usually within the first one hour of life. Why are we doing this? This is best practice globally. And it is what is recommended by the World Health Organization. It's practiced all over. And the reason, one of the reasons is to help control bleeding. Mm. So then... Hang on, I get control bleeding. bleeding. You know when, yes. You know when a woman puts to bed, mm -hmm. definitely she's going to lose some blood. Yes. And in the process, by the time she puts the baby to breast, there are some hormones that are responsible for lactation and also constriction of the uterine muscles. So by the time the baby is put to breast, it stimulates the hormone and it aids contraction of the uterus, which is the womb. So it goes in I and it controls as against the uterus just being flaccid, that we say is tonic. Right. So that's the first thing. Thereafter, we put the baby to breast and we continue. And you know the first thing that comes out from the breast milk, from the milk itself is colostrum. That first milk. Mm that comes out is colostrum. And it is very, very essential that every woman that wants to breastfeed or wants to go through the exclusive breastfeeding, which is what we advocate, must give that baby the colostrum. What is colostrum mm. The colostrum, of? usually, you know, the color, sometimes, that's the first milk that the woman produces. Mm -hmm. And the color varies. Sometimes you have it like off-white, yellowish, and it has something very essential in it, which is the immunoglobulin. And it's um, an antibody, which the baby needs to protect itself in the first few days of life. Mm. But I, I know three women in my life that had issues with breastfeeding at first. They, they were unable to bring out breast milk, you know, and be able to have the baby latch on at very early stages. In fact, I think about a month in was still very much an issue for them to lactate and have baby. I think one of them had an issue for one month, and then the other just 
didn't bother breastfeeding that particular child. And so I would like to ask about the difficulty, because I think that the, the misconception that we have is, you know, the breast milk comes naturally. naturally. It has to come. Some persons seem to have issues having the breast milk. So what are the techniques to be able to lactate and, you know, be able to have your baby latch on, you know, some, you know, techniques and tips that you would give? Okay. It's not impossible. We have cases like that, but those are outliers. Mm -hmm. However, for people not to come down with such um, um, complaints or challenges, that is why I took us through having to go through the proper antenatal care. Mm. A woman that goes through the antenatal process would have been educated on how and why she needs to breastfeed. So I told you it's an hormonal response. There's a feedback mechanism that is involved in all of this. So when the woman is um, psychologically prepared that she wants to breastfeed, remember, immediately a woman gets pregnant, towards the first few months of life, from, 14, uh, from 16 weeks upwards, you realize that the breast milk becomes um, full. The breast will become full with milk. It's already preparing itself towards delivery and for the baby by the time the baby comes. Mm -hmm. And that's why you even find that even a woman that delivers before term, which we call a preterm delivery, such, the woman can still pr produce milk for that baby. She will express the milk and give to the baby. So it's already established that the breast milk is readily available. So for such a woman that cannot breastfeed or probably she couldn't lactate, She's not getting enough milk. It means that it might be as a result of not positioning the baby well, mm -hmm. they're not being psychologically prepared, they're not, get, uh, adequate, not getting adequate nutrition, or she might not even be taking enough fluids. Mm. And in all of this, it's something that she ought to have prepared herself. But if she now finds herself in such a situation, it's best she sees a midwife or a doctor so that they can discuss and see where the issues are. Mm. At times, it might even be the, the, the nature of the nipple. Mm. Because for the baby to latch well on the breast, the nipple has to be erect, as against when you have something that is retracted. Mm. So when it's retracted, the baby cannot position well, because positioning is an essential aspect of breastfeeding, if we must get it right. So the baby has to position the baby in such a way that the, the lips of the baby goes, uh, covers the areola, that's the black outside part of the breast. Mm -hmm. Then the, the nipple is inside, and the baby is able to pull the breast milk. Mm -hmm. So all of that are very essential for such a woman to be able to sustain. I mean, Nigeria has a disparity when it comes to, I mean, women and the support for women and, and just health care for women in general. When it comes to support, technically, family life, work-life balance, and even with husbands and um, the external family, right? And that's a very big issue that one has to address. So what role can family members, you know, mm -hmm. healthcare providers, and even employers mm -hmm. play? Because three-month maternal leave is not <laughs> enough, in my opinion. And then you come back, you're dealing with coming back to work, you have a nursing uh, baby, you're thinking about taking that very little child to daycare. There's so much going in, in the mind of a mother, I would think. So how then can we ensure that mothers have the support that they need to successfully breastfeed? And that, for me, I would say a very big thank you to the people that came, especially WHO, the World Health Organization, for coming down with this theme. This year's theme is breastfeeding for all, closing the gap. In terms of um, closing the gap, ensuring that we do not have disparity mm -hmm. for either is those that are very comfortable, that can breastfeed, you are economically buoyant. No, it's something that every woman should go through, that we encourage every woman. In fact, Regardless of probably our HIV status or other conditions that some people will, in quotes and unquote, believe that because she has a particular condition, she cannot breastfeed. No. Now, in terms of support, I'll still go back to the process. It has to start from, from pregnancy. A, woman, a man that um, goes through the ANC, the antenatal care, with the woman, at some point, must have been informed his role as a spouse. Mm -hmm. It starts from there. Because it will enable her to be able to lactate well. Mentally, she will be so relaxed and she can go through the process. Really, exclusive breastfeeding is not as easy. But however, it is something that is highly commendable. It's something that is rewarding when done as it should be done. Now, for support, I've said we start from the home, whereby the spouse assists the, the woman by giving her that love and enabling environment. That joy is there. Then it now goes on to the mother mm -hmm. and the mother-in-laws. If they are not well informed on about um, 
the importance of exclusively breastfeeding a child. It is not that people do not breastfeed, especially in this part of the world. A lot of people breastfeed, but how do they breastfeed? We do not encourage mixing of any sorts, not even drugs. Some people, when they deliver, they start giving some drugs to the children. It's not advisable. For how long should mm. you breastfeed? She's supposed to breastfeed exclusively for six months without adding anything, not even water. And is it okay to extend these yes, six months? Yes, I did it. My, <clears throat> I did it even as a first time. My first child was support because a woman that is doing this, it shows that such a, an individual is highly responsible. She's compassionate and she wants the best for her child. So um, in my own opinion, and I strongly believe that um, it is not likely. But for those that for whatever reason do not support breastfeeding, this is in why public. we are doing in public. Mm. This is why we are doing this. In fact, that sometimes you have aprons that for breastfeeding yes, women that they can put so on they can and wear she can and yes covers, and make so her cape yeah a cape child. very comfortable, mm. fanciful, yeah. just modify be comfortable. You know, you do these things, and at the end of the day, to also encourage other people, mm -hmm. especially the youth and those that have not um, started having babies. That oh, if she can do it like this, so touch and the baby is so comfortable, well placed yeah. and. It's nature. I, it's, yes, it's, it's nature. What I, what I find uh, uh, interesting, and I, I hopefully we'll be able to address this, is also how we can make the environment um, or, like, for example, our workplace, common areas, you know, malls where we go to, like, women's bathroom, where we can have, you know, change station, diaper stations, plus designated, designated areas. Area. So there, there are di diaper stations that you have in some hotels that I've been at, but not for all of the restrooms in most of the malls in most of uh, parts of Nigeria as well. So I think I would like for you to talk about that. So we're talking about advocacy for environments and even at workplace environments that are, you know, breastfeeding friendly, friendly, you know, where they can go in and, you know, you know, it's very designated to nursing mothers and mothers with children, even when they bring their children to work and they have to, you know, change their diapers or how, how can we start to incorporate that in our everyday uh, life in strata and these spaces? This, for me, is a form of advocacy we are doing right now to, to sensitize opinion leaders, to sensitize those policymakers to start to take ownership of the process and the act of breastfeeding. So when people take ownership, they are informed there will be sustainability, and it can start them. Um, there are some you need to think outside, not just even the box now. In fact, we mm -hmm. think without a box mm -hmm. that you might feel that ah, this is our space, our space. We don't have space in the office. No, how can we say no? We can't now designate just mm -hmm. one a whole room. Oh, uh -uh. For you people, yes, how many mothers do we have here? How many mothers do we have here? But remember, you also be having clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have people that True. come to because you are rendering service. So regardless of whatever you are doing in your own place of work. You should know that there will be women will also be coming to your place because it shows there's inclusivity mm -hmm. and we should try to incorporate this into our organization and in terms of our planning and managing so then for the malls yes we cannot overemphasize this a mall that has provision for a place where a woman can breastfeed naturally every, any woman will prefer to go to that mall as against where yeah. she cannot even have time for herself and her babies so it's even a marketing strategy mm -hmm. for organizations, the malls, and workplaces. Do you hear? Do you hear? <laughs> Can you hear? You, you spoke about Lagos State earlier. Um, what efforts, uh, how much of these efforts have Lagos State, has Lagos State put in to ensure that women, breastfeeding mothers, are absolutely comfortable as far as they can? Well, in as much I cannot speak authoritatively mm. on behalf of the state, mm. but it's been in the news, in the papers, and everywhere that the Lagos State government has been doing fantastically well when it comes to support for um, breastfeeding women, the nursing mothers, I'm aware that um, I think the first two children, mm -hmm. they, they are entitled to... Of the to, year? Of the year, of when, after delivery. Mm -hmm. They are entitled to six months postnatal um, care mm -hmm. in which um, she goes for leave to have to exclusively breastfeed the baby. I'm also aware that there's... Um, paternity leave for mm -hmm. two, we uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then also, they also make the resumption very, very flexible, okay. such that um, she resumes earlier, maybe like two hours, such an individual can close her head 
so that she can also still go home and take care of the baby. Mm. I also heard some, also sorry, I'm sorry, Judith. I also heard something very interesting about breastfed children when they grow up that they are more intelligent. <laughs> how true is this? Because I'd like to put this to the test. You know, how Who true is it? How it? I, I was breastfed for two, two, two. I was breastfed. No so. wonder. <laughs> <laughs> how true is this, though? It is absolutely true. There are various uh, um, publications, researches that have been done, and I can even start from myself mm -hmm. as, a, as an advocate for breastfeeding. I've gone through it. When I, first, when I took up my, my job, my baby was two months old, mm -hmm. and I still went through the process because I had the enabling environment to do that. And such a, a child that is exclusively breastfed, there is no how. You will be visiting hospitals in and out of the hospital that a child is sick. Mm. Most of them do not fall sick. So it's like you are, you are, you are building a foundation mm -hmm. that is so firm that regardless of the storm, yeah. such an individual but, can stand through the test of time. But the interesting bit is what if this child, unfortunately, is not being breastfed by their own mother? Does this change anything? Because we've got instances where kids are adopted even at birth and they have to be breastfed by another woman who well, would be their mother surrogate, after then, yeah. or surrogate. Um, does this change any dynamic in any way, shape or form, whether scientifically or socially? No, or in terms of connection or everything that you've spoken about? Consider the fact that the, one, the mother died at birth. Mm -hmm, perhaps. So, okay, maybe perhaps or yes. for that. Well, most times, such uh, babies, if their mother are alive, it's best that this is a woman that's put to bed that... But there are some babies that have maybe lactose intolerance and they cannot take a particular, they, they do not really take breast milk. But if it's in terms of surrogacy, mm. it is not likely that um, anything is going to change. Although every breast milk is unique to each woman. But nonetheless, the composition of a breast milk, the breast milk as it were, is almost the same. Mm. So all the essential nutrients that the child needs to grow, to thrive, and to be free from illnesses is already in the breast milk. So regardless of who breastfeeds the child, what is most important is that that child is taking breast milk. I mean, there, so, yeah, there are some children that there were no breastfeed. My, my younger sister, my mother died during her childbirth and she wasn't breastfed. And she's by far one of the most uh, intelligent, enterprising young women I've ever met in my entire life. I won't tell her to her face too. I mean, but as well, we're running out of time. We're pressed for time. I, I have to ask you, seven days, 1st of August to the 7th of August, with we uh, breast, World Breastfeeding Week uh, advocacy commemorating the week, uh, calling to attention new mothers. So for new mothers and um, intending mothers that are listening, what are some very key valuable tips you'd like to live with them as we wrap up the show? Okay, firstly, I want to start by saying that the public, general public, should support breastfeeding in all ramifications. Then also that um, they should prepare their mind that after the exclusive breastfeeding period for six months, such a child should continue breastfeeding to two years. Two years, but by six months, we we'll, we'll commence complementary feeding because the breast milk will not be sufficient for that child mm. as at that time, as the child is growing, because, you know, they started walking. So we sh people generally should not um, discourage breastfeeding women to continue the process. They should not sh call them down that, oh, he's, um, after all, he started working. Why are you telling him uh, her to continue breastfeeding? Why is your baby still breastfeeding? No. So please, my first message is that um, breastfeeding is for six months exclusively. Thereafter, they continue the process for two years and introduce complementary foods. By complementary foods, I mean the locally available foods that the family eats is what we should introduce to such children. Thereafter, then the family, even the religious settings, everybody, everybody should be making that campaign. In fact, permit me to say that um, Islamically is in the Quran that um, women should breastfeed their children for a period of two years mm -hmm. and above if they have the capability to do so. so it has some religious mm. on that zone. And I also have that in other religions and yes. religion. Then for us as Nigerians, we know that it is so, something that is culturally acceptable. And regardless of whether we are Nigerians or not or Africans, mm. the fact remains that it is natural and it is something that is highly compatible with the children. So my take home is that everybody 
whether the youth, the adults, the elderly, the mothers, the mother-in-laws, neighbors, friends, should all come together and support breastfeeding and also breastfeeding women such that we can have a healthier society, mm -hmm. considering the fact that children that are not well breastfed mm -hmm. or that have not gone through complementary breastfeeding, sometimes they have higher chances of coming down with non-communicable diseases. So right. in whole, breastfeeding is essential. Let's come together so that we can have healthier families and a more prosperous society. Rashida Sunny Afalobi, thank, thank you, so you much very much. You on. have educated not just I and Judith, but everybody but else out as there. well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Support, because a woman that is doing this, it shows that such a, an individual is highly responsible. She's compassionate and she wants the best for her child. So um, in my own opinion, and I strongly believe that um, it is not likely, but for those that for whatever reason do not support breastfeeding, this is in why public. we are doing in public. Mm. This is why we are doing this. In fact, that sometimes you have aprons that for breastfeeding yes, women that they can put so on they can and wear she can and yes covers, and make so her cape yeah a cape child. very comfortable, mm. fanciful, yeah. just modify, be comfortable. You know, you do these things, and at the end of the day, to also encourage other people, mm -hmm. especially the youth and those that have not um, started having babies. That oh, if she can do it like this, so touch and the baby is so comfortable, well placed yeah. and. It's nature. I, it's, yes, it's, it's nature. What I, what I find uh, uh, interesting, and I, I hopefully we'll be able to address this, is also how we can make the environment um, or, like, for example, our workplace, common areas, you know, malls where we go to, like, women's bathroom, where we can have, you know, change station, diaper stations, plus designated, designated areas. areas. So there, there are di diaper stations that you have in some hotels that I've been at, but not for all of the restrooms in most of the malls in most of uh, parts of Nigeria as well. So I think I would like for you to talk about that. So we're talking about advocacy for environments and even at workplace environments that are, you know, breastfeeding friendly, friendly, you know, where they can go in and, you know, you know, it's very designated to nursing mothers and mothers with children, even when they bring their children to work and they have to, you know, change their diapers or how, how can we start to incorporate that in our everyday uh, life in strata and these spaces? This, for me, is a form of advocacy we are doing right now to, to sensitize opinion leaders, to sensitize those policymakers to start to take ownership of the process and the act of breastfeeding. So when people take ownership, they are informed there will be sustainability, and it can start them. Um, there are some you need to think outside, not just even the box now. In fact, we mm -hmm. think without a box mm -hmm. that you might feel that ah, this is our space, our space. We don't have space in the office. No, how can we say no? We can't now designate just mm -hmm. one a whole room. Oh, uh -uh. For you people, yes, how many mothers do we have here? How many mothers do we have here? But remember, you also be having clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have people that True. come to because you are rendering service. So regardless of whatever you are doing in your own place of work. You should know that there will be women will also be coming to your place because it shows there's inclusivity mm -hmm. and we should try to incorporate this into our organization and in terms of our planning and managing so then for the malls yes we cannot overemphasize this a mall that has provision for a place where a woman can breastfeed naturally every, any woman will prefer to go to that mall as against where yeah. she cannot even have time for herself and her babies so it's even a marketing strategy mm -hmm. for organizations, the malls, and workplaces. Do you hear? Do you hear? <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah. No, you, you spoke about Lagos State earlier. Um, what efforts, uh, how much of these efforts have Lagos State, has Lagos State put in to ensure that women, breastfeeding mothers, are absolutely comfortable as far as they can? Well, in as much I cannot speak authoritatively mm. on behalf of the state, mm. but it's been in the news, in the papers, and everywhere that the Lagos State government has been doing fantastically well when it comes to support for um, breastfeeding women, the nursing mothers, I'm aware that um, I think the first two children, mm -hmm. they, they are entitled to... Of the to, year? Of the year, of when, after delivery. Mm -hmm. They are entitled to six months postnatal um, care mm -hmm. in which um, she goes for leave to have to exclusively breastfeed the baby. I'm also aware that there's... Um, paternity leave for mm -hmm. two, we uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then also, they also make the resumption very, very flexible, okay. such that um, she resumes earlier, maybe like two hours, 
such an individual can close her head so that she can also still go home and take care of the baby. Mm. I also heard There's some. Also sorry, I'm sorry. Judy, I also heard something very interesting about breastfed children when they grow up that they are more intelligent. <laughs> How true is this? Because I'd like to put this to the test. You know, how Who true is it? How it? I, I was breastfed for two, two, two. I was breastfed. No so. wonder. <laughs> how true is this, though? It is absolutely true. There are various uh, um, publications, researches that have been done, and I can even start for myself mm -hmm. as a as an advocate for breastfeeding. I've gone through it when I first when I took up my my job. My baby was two months old, mm -hmm. and I still went through the process because I had the enabling environment to do that. And such a, a child that is exclusively breastfed, there is no how you will be visiting hospitals in and out of the hospital that a child is sick. Mm. Most of them do not fall sick. So it's like you are, you are, you are building a foundation mm -hmm. that is so firm that regardless of the storm, yeah. Such an individual but, can stand through but the But an interesting of time. bit is, what if this child, unfortunately, is not being breastfed by their own mother? Does this change anything? Because we've got instances where kids are adopted even at birth, and they have to be breastfed by another woman who well, would be their mother surrogate, after then, yeah. or surrogate. Um, does this change any dynamic in any way, shape or form, whether scientifically or socially? No, or in terms of connection or everything that you've spoken about? Consider the fact that the, one, the mother died at birth. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. So, okay, maybe perhaps or yes. for that. Well, most times, such uh, babies, if their mother are alive, it's best that this is a woman that's put to bed. That, but there are some babies that have maybe lactose intolerance and they cannot take a particular, they, they do not really take breast milk. But if it's in terms of surrogacy, mm. it is not likely that um, anything is going to change. Although, Every breast milk is unique to each woman. But nonetheless, the composition of a breast milk, the breast milk as it's were, is almost the same. Mm. So all the essential nutrients that the child needs to grow, to thrive, and to be free from illnesses is already in the breast milk. So regardless of who breastfeeds the child, what is most important is that that child is taking breast milk. I mean, there, so, yeah, there's some children that they were no breastfed. My, my younger sister, my mother died during her childbirth and she mm -hmm. wasn't breastfed. And she's by far one of the most uh, intelligent, enterprising young women I've ever met in my entire life. I won't tell her to her face too. Mm -hmm. I mean, but as well, we're running out of time. We're pressed for time. I, I have to ask you, seven days, 1st of August to the 7th of August, with we uh, breast, World Breastfeeding Week, uh, advocacy commemorating the week, uh, calling to attention new mothers. So for new mothers and um, intending mothers that are listening, what are some very key valuable tips you'd like to live with them as we wrap up the show? Okay, firstly, I want to start by saying that the public, general public, should support breastfeeding in all ramifications. Then also that um, they should prepare their mind that after the exclusive breastfeeding period for six months, such a child should continue breastfeeding to two years. Two years, but by six months, we we'll, we'll commence complementary feeding because the breast milk will not be sufficient for that child mm. as at that time, as the child is growing, because, you know, they started walking. So we sh people generally should not um, discourage breastfeeding women to continue the process. They should not sh call them down that, oh, is, um, after all, you started working. Why are you telling him uh, her to continue breastfeeding? Why is your baby still breastfeeding? No. So please, my first message is that um, breastfeeding is for six months exclusively. Thereafter, they continue the process for two years and introduce complementary foods. By complementary foods, I mean the locally available foods that the family eats is what we should introduce to such children. Thereafter, then the family, even the religious settings, everybody, everybody should be making that campaign. In fact, Permit me to say that um, Islamically is in the Quran that um, women should breastfeed their children for a period of two years mm -hmm. and above if they have the capability to do so. So it has some religious mm -hmm. undertone. And I also have that in other religions and yes. religion. Then for us as Nigerians, we know that it is so, something that is culturally acceptable. And regardless of whether we are Nigerians or not or Africans, mm -hmm. the fact remains that it is natural. And it is something that is highly compatible with the children. So my take home is that everybody 
whether the youth, the adults, the elderly, the mothers, the mother-in-laws, neighbors, friends, should all come together and support breastfeeding and also breastfeeding women such that we can have a healthier society, mm -hmm. considering the fact that children that are not well breastfed mm -hmm. or that have not gone through complementary breastfeeding, sometimes they have higher chances of coming down with non-communicable diseases. So right. in whole, breastfeeding is essential. Let's come together so that we can have healthier families and a more prosperous society. Rashida Sunny Afalobi, thank, thank you, so you much very much. You on. have educated not just I and Judith, but everybody but else out as there. well. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming on.